Welcome to Legal 123s with Berta Dotto. Legal issues simplified through real client stories and real world experiences. Creating simplicity in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Legal 123s with Berta. I'm your host, Brad with my co host, Michael Bird. Thanks, Brad. As a business and healthcare law firm, details matter. Mm-hmm. This season's theme is Zoom In. Once we know our big picture vision or strategy, we have to roll up our sleeves to get the work done. With each episode this season, we'll have our typical stories and make sure we talk about specific actions to focus on in 2022. Hey, Michael, you know, before we bring on today's guest to help close out this season, are you familiar with NASA's DART mission? Man, I am so glad you asked me that question, Brad. I was just thinking this morning that I haven't talked about space. (laughs) <laughs> and, I mean, it's been at least two days since we recorded another episode and you asked me a question about space. I think it was Star Trek or something like that. No, it was, yeah, you you uh, you sit, tend to really like to talk about it. Now, so tell me more, Brad. Tell me about this. Yes, I think we all should know about this. NASA's DART mission stands for a Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission. Start as part of NASA's continued efforts to defend the Earth from oncoming asteroids. So NASA plans on hitting a space rock, or as they call it, a moonlit, with a high-speed air, uh, spacecraft. Okay, so the only thing you talk about more than space are really old movies. <laughs> and I'm kind of feeling that right now, and that you're maybe uh, have your worlds have collided, literally. And uh, are we talking about some sort of Bruce Willis action movie in space right now no this is not armageddon but it's a great movie um no this is for real um uh, according to nasa it it believes that this dart mission is they're gonna uh they're gonna hit this uh rock and it's gonna make it change by a a fraction of one percent well that sounds like a a lot much ado about nothing that doesn't sound like very much all right yeah it doesn't sound much but in space if done correctly both in distance and time a fraction of one percent of, of pushing this rock in 1%, it's a difference of it hitting the earth or missing it by hundreds of thousands of miles. So, uh, you know, as such, if you're talking about an asteroid, the outskirts of the solar system that we can see, and it's in a collision course with earth, NASA could save the earth. Oh man, well, when will we know if it works? Well, the mission is gonna take about a year. The spacecraft's gonna travel about 7 million miles from earth on a, this collision course and hit it about 15,000 miles per hour. That's probably faster than you drive, Michael. Um, and it's and it's when the spacecraft hits it, it's gonna you know, obliterate it. But uh, that's, that's what they're trying to do. Well, thank you for my daily space talk yes. uh, hit of uh, uh, information. But what does this have to do with today's guest? All right, so when I was reading this article on DART and preparing for today's guest, I started thinking about the DART mission and it has a lot to do with what our guest does for a living. He looks way out into the future, hoping to protect his clients from catastrophic events, hoping that they never happen, but has the protections built in just in case, much like the DART mission. Well, my friend Larry, who I'm about to introduce, uh, probably has never been compared to an astronaut before, but (laughs) well done. I'm sure you're making him feel good. Let me introduce our guest today. Uh, Our uh, guest today is Lawrence B. Keller, Larry. Uh, Larry is a certified financial planner. He is the founder of Physician Financial Services, a company dealing exclusively with the financial needs and concerns of members of the medical profession. He has spent the last 30 years providing insurance and investment products and services to residents, fellows, and attending physicians, uh, including products ranging from disability income insurance, life insurance, and investments. He's uh, earned the additional uh, following designations, uh, Chartered Life Underwriter, Chartered Financial Consultant, Registered Health Underwriter, and Life Underwriter Training Council Fellow. He's written uh, tons of different publications. Both you and I have shared the stage with Larry multiple times, and, uh, and he's a prolific speaker around the country. Larry, welcome. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. Really looking forward to this episode. Cool. Well, we're excited to have you on our show today. And and, and like you, the vast number of um, uh, the vast number of your clients are in the healthcare industry. 
So tell us what drew you to this industry. Well, believe it or not, you can imagine most people don't go to college and wake up and say, I cannot wait to become an insurance agent. It just doesn't happen. So like most, I found my way there by accident. I was graduating from college. You know, this was 1990. Uh, what we found is I wasn't a CPA or I wasn't an accountant. I didn't have a degree in computer science. I actually was a uh, psychology major with a business minor. And I really thought I was going to end up in like the men's clothing world, like haberdashery. So I, I graduated. I didn't know what to do. And I ran into a headhunter. And the headhunter said, have I got a job for you? And you don't have to sell anything. You're going to service existing clients. Boy, was that not true. <laughs> so you know, so I, I took a test, very much like the uh, Rorschach test. And it really is designed to determine how successful you might be in the insurance industry. And I was, again, a psychology major. So I said, I'm not a team player. I want to be rewarded for my own efforts. I'm willing to work endless hours for no money. I followed up and they said, you scored off the charts. And I'm thinking to myself, well, oh, surprise, surprise. I'm a psychology major. I'm right out of college. I think I can figure out how to answer the questions. I diligently followed up shortly thereafter. And I said, have you decided on the candidate that you're going to accept? And they said, no, we have not. And a couple of weeks later, they still weren't following up with me. So this is probably what got me the job. As I said, I will see you guys on Monday, have the books ready. I hung up and I was in the office on Monday studying for my insurance exam. Yeah. So, so what led me to healthcare? You know, really, when I first started, I was doing college education planning for people that had young kids. But I was a kid myself. I didn't know anything about having kids, let alone funding for college. But I was pretty good. I was making a lot of calls. I was meeting a lot of people. But there was really no commonality other than the fact that they had young kids. And they said, you seem like a nice guy. Um, yeah, we'll do a little bit of stuff, but I'm really much more looking towards overall planning. Can you help me with that? And I said, sure. You just have to give me tax returns and pay stubs and your employee benefits booklet. And you guys know, you ask clients for something today, you'll be lucky if you see it for six months. Yeah. So I went back to the guy that ran my office at the time. And I said, I got to tell you, I'm working awfully hard. I'm not seeing any great results. Uh, I think my time is up. And he said, you're doing great. I said, really? I, I don't seem to feel that way. He said, well, you know what? You should try this. You're very detail-oriented. Uh, you're young. You love to get into the weeds. You should try the medical marketplace. I said, okay, what do you mean by medical marketplace? And he said, you know, physicians and dentists and the like. And he came over to me with a manila file folder with hundreds of letters that were sent to physicians. And he said, you should follow up with them. They're all waiting for my call. I just don't have the time to do it. And there was no internet back in these days. And I said, that's great. Where are their phone numbers? He said, well, I don't have those. I said, really? So I hit the white pages, right? We're gonna date yeah, we're going to date ourselves here. I hit hold the on, white I think we pages. Had, hold on, Larry. That's our first vocabulary word of the day for those who don't know. The White Pages was this giant book that actually had everyone's phone number. And I don't even know if it exists anymore. Another word that for people that may maybe they will relate to is the phone book. The phone book. Okay. Yes. So I, I hit the phone book and I will tell you, doctors are very smart. Like back in the day, they were either unlisted or they listed their first name and last name with no address or a first initial last name with no address. And I just hoped that I got the right person. And I started smiling and uh, dialing, as they say. And the only people that would talk to me were these young physicians. And the first guy I got told me, you know, it sounds like I'd be interested in speaking with you. Uh, I'm an ophthalmology resident. And I said, that's great. Can you tell me what that exactly is? <laughs> So he said, I'm an ophthalmologist in training. And I said, you have to forgive me. I'm not the smartest guy. 
uh, are you a doctor? And he said, yes, I'm an ophthalmologist. I graduated from medical school. I'm now doing my training. And I said, forgive the ignorance. Are you making any money? And he said, absolutely not. And I said, <laughs> you sound like the guy for me. You know, when can we get together? So I, I got together with him. You know, we hit it off pretty well. He was my first client. And from wow. there, things just progressed. That's awesome. So the, the commonality of, at the time, I didn't know a lot. And, and you guys know this. The hospital is pretty much the happy hunting ground for new financial advisors because we don't know much and the doctors don't mu know much. So we're either a great fit or we're headed for disaster. And we have to try to knock out that asteroid. So by the time I had a lot of these guys as clients, I already knew what they were about. I knew what was most important to them or what they might be concerned about. And I said, let me tailor my plans to their needs. And, mm -hmm. you know, and like uh, reviewing an employment contract, you know the big areas to look for. You know where the problem areas are. I know exactly the same thing when it comes to disability insurance or term life insurance and what they can do in terms of investments, what they might not be able to do in terms of investments. And it became a lot easier to become an expert in this area as opposed to one day working with the plumber, the next day you know, working with the attorney, the next day working with the executive. Just a lot easier in terms of knowing their needs. Sure. And so when did you start Physician Financial Services? Kind of, it sounds like you found your way into the healthcare market and then talked about you know, the bridge into what today is you know, PFS. Yeah, so I started in the industry in 1990. I did the college education funding, trying to find my way for about a year. And then 30 years ago, I started Physician Financial Services. And it was always based on the premise of doctors receive the best medical training in the world. Like if you ask them about a specific illness, they'll be able to easily tell you what the diagnosis is and what the treatments might be. But if you ask them about financial planning or insurance, let alone employment contracts, they have absolutely no idea. Mm. So, it, so if you look at this, and this is what you guys deal with every day, you know, they're so excited. They get a contract or they get an offer. They don't really want to read it. They look for what's the biggest salary I can get. They don't look at covenant not to compete. They don't look at the other benefits and they're ready to sign. And then it's either someone like me or more likely someone like you that says, wait a second, you know, you got to put the brakes on here. There's a lot more to it than that. And if you're getting a much larger offer than somebody else in the same geographic and geographic area, it's not because you're that great. It just means something might be at the back end of that contract that you don't see on the front end of the contract. So I looked at it this way. They've invested a ton of time and money in their education. And simply put, we're nothing more than highly educated money machines. And if we're working because we need the income, and that's what's going to drive our lifestyle and allow us to pay down our debts and accumulate wealth for our family, and we are stopped in our tracks due to an accident or sickness, even the best written financial plan is not going to work. So disability insurance really becomes the way to protect the money machine rather than the money itself. Yeah, that makes sense. And so those are the base of the services that when you start, when someone calls you up and you do have that young physician or even senior physician who calls you, maybe you can kind of give some, you know, high level explanation of what services you guys offer to them. Yeah. So we, yeah, we specialize in disability insurance and primarily term life insurance. Uh, I'll look at them and I'll say, okay, where are you in the course of your training? You know, mm -hmm. what is your, what is your income? You know, based on their specialty, whether they're academic or private practice, we'll pretty much know what their income potential looks like. And, you know, now we're talking about professional sports money, right? Over a long period of time, a $500,000 contract over 30 years, is suddenly $15 million, but no one's thinking about it like that. So what we want to do is institute a policy or several policies to create a strategy that as their income is rising, 
They can buy more coverage. They don't need to do an exam, blood test, urine test, or answer any medical questions after the first time. Very often, they don't even need to do that. Now, what you'll find is I run into this all the time. So the first one is, Larry, this all sounds great. I can see you've got my best interest in mind, but you know, I can't afford anything. Like I'm a resident. I don't have any money. So I will tell you what I have deemed to be the lease with the option to buy plan. And you can use this for one plan. You can actually use this for two plans. So let's use plastic surgeons because we know we have a lot of these in common. And they say, again, I really can't afford much of anything. And I say, look, you can buy a policy with a thousand dollar a month benefit. Very small. And if you're a guy, the premium might be $30 to $35 a month. If you're a female, it might be $50 to $55 a month. But once you have it, not only am I giving you $1,000 of monthly income, you'll have the ability to potentially increase your benefit up to twenty or even $30,000 a month, never doing an exam, blood test, urine test, or answering medical questions again. So you can buy your policy. You can almost let it go on autopilot until you're ready to complete your residency or fellowship. Now you say, hey, Larry, it's time. I'm earning a lot more. I've got my contract signed. I really want to protect my income. And for this small amount of money, they've locked in the ability to protect their future income potential. And once they have it, should anything subsequently happen or they get a diagnosis, we're not even going to ask them about that. Yeah, awesome. Well, so Larry, this season's theme is Zoom In, and I would love kind of in light of COVID and your experiences just to share some thoughts on what people can do for protecting their incomes and accumulating wealth uh, in 2022, some kind of tidbits. Yeah. So the first thing is, believe it or not, COVID really skyrocketed the insurance industry into current age. Mm -hmm. So we really don't use paper applications anymore. It's all done electronically. Wow. A, lot, a lot of the companies changed their limits where you used to go out and have to get an exam, blood test, and urine test up to certain amounts, typically $10,000 a month. Some companies have no limit for disability insurance. There is no labs required unless specifically asked by the underwriter. So what do I see? The first thing I see is we'll go back to your Bruce Willis reference. And if we all remember the six cents, I know the three of us are old enough, maybe not so much some of the listeners, but the one of the main characters comes in and he says, I see dead people. I see dead people every day of my career. These are physicians that believe that they have an own occupation or an own specialty policy, but they really don't. And if they cannot do the duties of a plastic surgeon, so they're disabled, maybe they have an essential tremor but they're smart and motivated and resourceful enough to work and they choose to do something and they earn an income, their benefit may be potentially reduced or even eliminated. Well, there's six companies that have a policy that does not work like that. You've got Berkshire Life, which is Guardian, Standard Insurance Company, Emeritus, Principal, Ohio National, and Mass Mutual. And these policies say, if you're disabled and you cannot perform your duties as a plastic surgeon, we will deem you totally disabled. You can earn as much as you want in another occupation or another medical specialty with no offset. So ideally, that's what a physician wants to have. Yeah, that's huge. Huge. The other things that you'll find is disability insurance policies in and of themselves, they do not differ much. So if we hone in on these six companies, I will tell you price aside, there's really three areas that you're going to find that are different. So the first one is going to be how are claims handled related to mental slash nervous and or substance abuse disorders? Mm-hmm. Well, hey, most of the companies, you have a choice. You can either say, Larry, you know, I never thought of any of this stuff before, but in COVID, I've seen a lot of bad stuff. I don't want a limitation for those claims. I want a burnout or an anxiety or a depression claim to be handled the same way as a cancer claim. And in most cases, you can opt for that. Not in the state of California. Uh, There's a company called Principal, not in the state of New York. And not if you're an emergency medicine physician, an anesthesiologist, a pain management physician, or a CRNA. But other than that, 
it's an option. Typically, it's a 10% higher price point to not have a limitation. Second area is, well, what if I'm disabled and I want to reside overseas? So I'm disabled in the United States. I want to move to Belize and spend the rest of my time there. Some companies will allow you to do this with no limitations. Other ones are going to have a limitation. And it could be 12 months. It could be 24 months. Mm. And, the, and the last one is the increase options and how they work. So the traditional increase option, you, know, you pay for the right to be able to do this. It comes up very often every year. There are certain circumstances where you can use it earlier. But at the end of the day, it comes up every year. You're paying for this option. If you want to use it, that's great. If you don't want to use it, it's your choice. The other type of increase option can work very well. It is no cost. It's not a multiple of the base benefit. So you could buy literally a $1,000 policy and have the ability to increase it to $30,000 or $20,000. But you do have to check in with the insurance company. If you don't check in, you'll traditionally lose your insurance increase option. And if you do check in and you qualify for a larger benefit, you have to buy at least 50% of that. And if you don't, you lose your increase option. So you really have to look at yourself in the mirror. And you as the individual will know yourself better than I ever will. And as a sounding board, I will tell you, based on your individual needs and goals and budget, these are my recommendations. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. I think those are three really good points. And I think it's great, Larry, that you were able to share that because one of the things I think people don't realize is they just go buy, you know, you know, something off the shelf and they don't realize the impact it has either based on their state or what they plan to do if something catastrophic does happen where they can't operate anymore or if their their salary or whatever increases. So those are all just so important, which is when you are having these conversations um, to, to look at disability and life insurance of having someone like yourself partner with that person, um, which is why we're so excited that you could join us, because that's obviously crucial for them, our audience to understand the difference of you know, just buying it online versus having a whole conversation with someone like you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And and we're so grateful that you could join us today. I think what we'll do next, Larry, is say goodbye. We'll break for a commercial. And then uh, on the other side, Brad and I will come back and share a few observations from a legal perspective. Appreciate you coming. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Have a great weekend. Many business owners use legal counsel as a last resort rather than as a proactive tool that can further their success. Why? For most, it's the fear of unknown legal costs. Bird Adato's Access Plus program makes it possible for you to get the ongoing legal assistance you need for one predictable monthly fee. That gives you unlimited phone and email access to the legal team so you can receive feedback on legal concerns as they arise. Access Plus, a smarter, simpler way to access legal services. Find out more. Visit birdadato.com today. Welcome back to Legal 123's with Bird Adotto. I'm your host, Brad Adotto, with my co-host, Michael Bird. Still here. Michael, that was really great catching up with Larry. It's been a while. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, I always learn so much uh, when we talk to Larry and, and really just... Having an expert in a niche area that kind of crosses over with our clients, uh, you just realize the importance of having someone who knows the needs and business of doctors. And uh, it reminded me a lot of a season five episode that we did on being yeah. disabled by your corporate documents. Totally agree with that. Yeah, I remember that episode. And, you know, you, you can have an, um, an awesome partner like Larry who can help develop that best plan of action to help protect you and your family. But it's, I think going back to that episode you referenced ahead of time, if you don't execute this within your business model, your personal life, you don't really have a good complete picture at all. Yeah. And, you know, this is why when we're developing a business succession plan, we always talk about in our lectures and with our whiteboard meetings using uh, the four C's and, it, for from our perspective, when you are building a business, particularly a business where you have co-owners or partners, uh, there are just four big areas that tend to make or break that relationship. And if you can cover those things, you get everyone on the same page from an expect, expectations perspective. 
and kind of the you know the high level of the four C's are cost. You know how much are we having to uh, pay to get whatever ownership we're getting or capitalize a new business, and then what is the ownership that we're getting in return for that? Uh, two is compensation. You know, what are, how are, how's the money going to work once we own this business together mm-hmm. and uh, understanding that there may be people that are doing, running this business as part of their day job and getting some salary and then uh, maybe profit distributions. Yep. And you want to make sure that's all lined up. Control is the third C. Mm-hmm. Our decision is going to be made. Yep. And finally, where Larry comes in are the contingencies, the what ifs things that may or may not even be in your control that can cause a change to the business, death, disability, obviously to connect to Larry, and then, you know, business divorces where people break up for, um, you know, nefarious reasons or not. Someone just decides to move. And and just harping on those four C's, I don't think a lot of people realize, Michael, that three of those four C's typically are taken care of their company agreement or operating agreement or whatever their governing document is. And that compensation C is typically done in their employment agreement. Um, so those just understanding from an audience perspective, as Michael was talking about this, you know, you really should understand that these are different documentations that should be delivered. But conceptually, as a big picture, all four of those should be talked about, which then lead us perfectly into our fifth C, which we've talked about before, which is really the communications with your fellow uh, uh, professionals should be a part of this. And like so the people like Larry and your, your CPAs and other individuals should all be part of this, this 4C conversation at some level because, um, you know, if one person's running off and giving these great benefits and another person's not documenting any of this anywhere else or your attorney's coming up with stuff, but they don't know what your financial planning looks like or your state planning attorney doesn't know what your financial planner's doing, these, this, this will have a, a catastrophic event is that you have all these great things, but none of them kind of align. And that's why, of course, we like having someone like Larry come along and work with, with our clients. Yeah, I mean, a really simple illustration is, you know, someone will, someone will say, yeah, I get it. Like if, if someone dies, you know, I don't want to be partners with their estate. And so I need to buy them out and I'm going to put it in my operating agreement that the value to buy out is X or we're going to get it valued and that this is the process that happens. Well, that's all fine and good. And you come up with a process and you come up with a number, but then how do you pay for it? And you fund it with a life insurance policy oftentimes. And sometimes people have a life insurance policy and they have a plan, but they don't necessarily seem together back to your point. And you just want everything to be kind of a seamless uh, you know, connection between both the policy and the uh, legal, you know, uh, agreement as to what's supposed to happen. So, Michael, in the, the limited time left, I'm going to let you close that on a Zoom in question I'm going to have to you. So, again, just like with Larry, we're going to hit that pause button. Let's talk about for our audience, you know, as we close out this season, what should they be zooming in on these specific axes to focus on for 2022? One of the things that I've been having more and more conversations about with our clients is even if you have a buy sell agreement to dust it off and take a look at it. I know you and I've been doing that recently. And, uh, and the, the reality is, is that things change. Your business changes, the ownership changes, and it's really easy to even be three to five years later from your last planning and for there to be enough, enough adjustments that, it merits things to be tightened and fresh. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, this is not the sexiest topic in the world when it comes to this, but I completely agree as a business owner, this is really important steps for you to take to really protect yourself, uh, your business and your family. And um, hopefully as we close out 2022, um, or sorry, 2021, um, you'll have that free moment to really think about these things. But Michael, final thoughts as we leave today. Well, I mean, again, if you're going to, need an insurance product and you're a medical professional you want to be getting this from someone who knows the industry yeah and even more importantly someone that merits being compared to an astronaut (laughs) well that closes out season six everybody but don't panic we will be back starting next year with season seven enjoy your holidays and we look forward to seeing next year thanks again for joining us today and remember if you like this episode please subscribe 
make sure to give us a five-star rating and share with your friends. You can also sign up for the Bertadotto newsletter by going to our website at bertadotto.com. Bertadotto is providing this podcast as a public service. This podcast is for educational purposes only. This podcast does not constitute legal advice, nor does it establish an attorney-client relationship. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by Bertadotto. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Please consult with an attorney on your legal issues. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Bertadotto is not affiliated with or endorsed by PAS, Guardian, or Physician Financial Services, and opinions stated are their own. The information should be relied upon only when coordinated with individual professional advice. Optional writers are available for an additional premium. Some policy benefits and features are not available to all occupations. Lawrence B. Keller is a registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, 355 Lexington Avenue, 9th Floor, New York, New York, zip code 10017, phone number 212-541-8800. Securities, products, and advisory services are offered through PAS at the phone number one. 1- 516-677-6200. Financial representative, the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, New York, New York, Guardian. PAS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. Physician Financial Services is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. AR Insurance License Number 1057229. California Insurance License Number 0C37340. PAS is a member FINRA SIPC 2021 129182, expiration date 10 2023.